All right, so I'm Anthony. Uh, I'm a physician assistant, uh, a graduate of the Toronto program from 2018. Great, so uh, my undergrad was actually in health sciences from the University of Ottawa. Um, I originally actually started off in biology, but ended up like really not liking the field. I was doing the ecology option and once I had to start walking through rivers at like six o'clock in the morning collecting specimens. I was like, nope, not for me. So I kind of reevaluated what I wanted to do and I decided that, you know, healthcare was probably a great route. Um, once I started in health sciences, I got introduced to hospital work. It was just a fluke by chance. The neighbor that I had in my dorm, um, her mother was one of the managers at one of the hospitals in the area. So uh, she was able to kind of sneak me into being a, a clerk. Uh, so I was a war clerk on a combined medical surgical unit for uh, about six years prior to going into the PA program. Um, and then because I was working mostly casual status because I was in the, the health sciences field, uh, I uh, ended up meeting a military PA on one of the units that I was floating to. Uh, so it was a, a military trained PA that was doing internal medicine at the hospital. So I kind of saw this guy walking around with these little letters at the end of his uh, coat. And I was like, what the heck is that? You have like a doctor's coat on, but you're not a doctor. Like what's going on here? And then he kind of explained what a PA was and uh, you know, the different areas that could be trained. So I started looking into the profession and decided to go through it through that. Can you tell us a little bit about what qualifications you needed to become a clerk and what the roles and duties are in that particular healthcare experience? Um, to be a clerk, you don't need very much. It's, it's an entry level position. Um, usually they do prefer people who are in some sort of healthcare field, whether you're a healthcare student in any field or a student in life sciences. Um, it, uh, when I first started, it was kind of pre our big EMR change. So a lot of it was still being done by paper. So when I was a, a clerk, our main goal was to uh, kind of collaborate with the nurses as well as the physicians for transcribing orders. So I would work with the physicians to transcribe their medical orders into the medication records for the nurses. And that was what they would use to administer their medications to the patients on a specific schedule. And then we did a whole bunch of other kind of unit coordination work, whether it was organizing patient transports, uh, organizing discharge follow-ups um, and other work like that. What advice would you give to pre-PA students on how to find a job as a ward clerk? Um, keep looking. Uh, honestly, just apply as much as you can. They're really hard jobs to get into just because there's such a limited amount. And when people tend to get into these positions, they stay into them for a very long time. Um, so, you know, if you apply to one of the big hospital systems as a work clerk and you don't get in the first eight or 10 tries, keep going because eventually they'll come across your resume or they'll need someone with your specific skill set to do it. Um, if you're having a really hard time and there's not any positions available, um, gaining hospital work through volunteer work can also be in your favor as well too. So um, you can volunteer as one of the workers that goes to the wards to help deliver food, uh, to be like a patient company person, to work with the physiotherapy department, things like that. And when the hospitals see that as experience in your um, resume and that you're already familiar with how the hospital works, they'll see that to an advantage as well. Does it require any coursework to actually do that job? Uh, a lot of it's done in hospitals. So when you apply, there are some basic skill sets they'll try to test you on. So for example, like your typing speed, um, if you're in an area that requires more than one language, like in Ottawa, for example, where I work, they prefer people who are bilingual to get a job at a part-time level or above. Um, but otherwise, a lot of the training is on the job. Um, part of my work clerk work was actually to become the corporate trainer. So I did do corporate training with the new incoming people. And um, so we taught them all like, you know, differences in medical terminology, how to transcribe medication orders, the elements of an order, um, patient rights for medication administration, things like that. How many healthcare experience hours did you have? It was about six years worth of uh, clerk work. So it was, a, it was quite a bit of hours because all of those paid healthcare experience hours worked quite well. Um, so it was, I think it was about 4,200 hours of healthcare work experience with just being a clerk plus my volunteer hours, which were a bit more in the minority, but just to kind of boost my diversity in my application. Um, that being said, not everyone who applies uh, has like a paid healthcare experience hours. Uh, so don't be, you know, um, sad if you don't have all that with you, you can still get a good application in with lots of um, volunteer work as well. And were there any other careers that you were contemplating at the time apart from physician assistant? I was choosing between uh, actually nursing and a physician assistant. There was kind of different 
aspects of each that I really liked. Um, I let people know that, you know, it depends on what your area of background in and what your interests are. Um, physician assistants are trained in a different way than nurses, but if you already have that nursing background, like a four year nursing undergraduate, you might consider an NP route more than a PA route, not that it's the wrong choice to do. Um, I kind of like the aspect that uh, PAs can work in the surgical field. That was one of my uh, drawings in when I kind of got there where you don't really primarily see NPs in the OR, but there's a lot of PAs that help in the OR field. So that was a, a take in for me. And what were some other things that drew you to the PA profession? I like the growth. So you can definitely tell that it was a profession that's needed in the healthcare system. Um, before PAs, there weren't many different levels of advanced practice providers that work with, uh, in, in clinics or hospital settings. There were nurse practitioners. You can have uh, advanced care uh, physiotherapists, or other than that, you can be a paramedic or an advanced care paramedic, things like that. So I could definitely tell that it was a growing field and that it was a uh, a field that needed a lot of work as well too so I kind of liked that the people who were entering that field at the time were the ones that were going to build the profession in, in the future right we were working from an area of no regulation not a lot of rules always working in a gray area so there was lots of room for us to build together and make the job. What was the process of applying to PA school for you? Uh, so the first time I applied I didn't get in at all <laughs> so uh, I applied again a second time and I didn't really change very much in terms of my work experience because I already been working as a clerk for a while um, but I definitely decided to uh, boost up my volunteer work so I started to do some extra volunteer work in the hospital to try and kind of boost my presence everywhere and um, the application was was stressful <laughs> so uh, you have to do the supplementary application online plus the mini multiple mini interviews uh, mine was a bit rushed so uh, I'm from Ottawa and the interviews are actually in Toronto for the U of T PA program. Um, so I submitted my supplementary application the second time and I was actually waitlisted. And then right before the interviews, you get this email saying like, you know, you might be called if, uh, if a position opens up or if someone decides not to come to the interview. So one of the big decisions was, you know, what do you do? If I'm in Ottawa and they call me for the interview, I'm not going to be able to make it to Toronto in time. Uh, so what I actually did was I sent an email back to the program. I said, you know what, that's great. Uh, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to make a trip to Toronto. And I just took a trip for Toronto to, for the four days that the interviews were happening. And then about two hours before the interview started, I got a call from the program saying there's a position open. Are you able to come for the interview? So I was able to rush down to the interview center. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, wow, what a whirlwind of uh, getting into PA school. Um, yeah. So you are a reapplicant. You didn't get in the first time, but you did get in the second time and you were waitlisted for the interview. Yeah. Um, and all it takes is just one yes. So that's fantastic. Uh, what about your GPA? Um, I don't remember my actual number from my uh, my undergrad, but it was in the mid to low end range. So it wasn't anything that was like super crazy competitive in my application. So I, based off of my experience, I'm assuming my supplementary application and my interviews kind of where I really stood out. Um, and that's an important thing to know too, that you don't need to have a 4.0 GPA to get into the school, but it's more of a... Uh, well-rounded uh, consideration for the program for all the people who are doing the uh, review process for U of T. And what do you think made you stand out as an applicant? Um, I think personality-wise and able to be able to think on your feet. Uh, the mini interview process is very, very uh, stressful. Um, we can't go into detail about the actual interview questions themselves because of the privacy issues, um, but uh, they really do put you on the spot. And I think how you react to those questions or how you're able to kind of formulate a response really quickly on the spot really shows how you can respond to like multitasking or very stressful situations. And can you share how you practiced or prepared? Were there any books or resources that you had used? Uh, I want to say that I used a bunch of resources, but I didn't really use a whole lot. <laughs> so uh, I read up on how multiple mini interviews work. Um, there was the book that they recommended was, was, I think it was called Doing Right by uh, a physician, which I forget his name. Um, so I read a little bit of that book because I was kind of uncertain of whether or not I was going to be in the interviews at all. I didn't prep as probably as much as I should. Um, but that being said, it could have went to my advantages as well too. Um, being put on the spot and be able to think like, you know, right away what your answers are might be more truthful and more original to who you are. Whereas if you over prepare, you might become more kind of robotic and monotone and it might, uh, you know, change the, how the examiners actually see you during the interviews as well. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience in PA school? So uh, there's three PA schools in Canada. There's, there's the Manitoba program, the McMaster program, and the U of T program. Um, I actually only applied for the U of T program. I did not apply to McMaster or Manitoba. So I kind of put all my eggs in one basket. 
Um, the reason for that was that I really liked the U of T uh, program structure. Um, I found that with my previous work experience and, you know, my networking within Ottawa, I really didn't want to lose that by having to leave Ottawa for a prolonged period of time. Um, I wanted to be able to do my rotations in Ottawa and kind of build the profession here because it wasn't a very big profession to begin with in the area, despite how big of a city it was. Um, the U of T program was great because uh, you had one year of mostly home learning, but you had to go to the city every once in a while for, you know, learning physical skills. Um, so I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, the other reason why I liked the U of T program is that I found the area for clinical rotations was quite a bit larger. Um, so U of T is partnered with the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. So um, you're able to do half of your rotations or you have to do half of your rotations uh, in Northern Ontario. So not only does it give you the opportunity to travel, but uh, being in rural areas really gives you a better experience in terms of getting hands-on work where, you know, you might be the first assistant of surgery during your rotation in the North. If you were mostly in academic centers, you might not get that opportunity. So how hard is PA school in your opinion? It is extremely difficult. <laughs> I found personally found it very hard. Um, not only just the amount of material, but the complexity of the material was, was you know, it was a lot to take in. Um, they always describe PA school, especially the didactic year, as like drinking out of a fire hose, and that's really how it is. They throw a lot of information you all at once, and a lot of it's, uh, I, I don't think they make it actually completely manageable on purpose, because they want to see how you can prioritize different work, um, in my opinion. I think that's how they organize kind of some of the curriculum. Um, but, uh, you know, there are ups and downs, uh, the U of T program, one of the downsides is actually that you're alone at home. So you don't feel like you have that kind of camaraderie or support that you would normally have if you were sitting in a classroom type setting. Um, but that being said, those residential blocks where you go to the city and meet your classmates, you do form, you know, really close friendships and groups where you can kind of connect with despite being so far away. Um, I uh, was one of the individuals where I kind of went against the program guidelines and th where they tell you not to work and I maintained my work uh, throughout my first year in didactic year. Um, obviously it was a very reduced schedule but just for financial reasons I couldn't afford the program if I stopped working during the first year so I had to continue working which kind of increased the stress level but in the end I found it made me a little bit more organized so it wasn't uh, the worst of things but that wouldn't be everyone's experience. And uh, how did you make sure that you stayed on top of all the material that you had learned? Um, um, so staying on top of the material is, uh, you know, everyone's choice. Uh, they do give you the program um, overview at the beginning of each course. So you do know from the syllabus what exactly you're going to be learning at which points. Uh, so you do have the opportunity to get ahead when, when you can. Um, I'd like to say that I stayed ahead all the time, but I got behind frequently and that's just the, the nature of the program itself. But I think having those friendships and those classmates that you can kind of get resources off of and bounce questions back and forth really helped to make up for lost time when you were falling behind. I think falling behind is inevitable, but it's just how you manage falling behind and you know relieving that stress is, is really important. So every once in a while, even if I was behind or if it was the day before a test and I was really stressed and behind, um, I would always take time to do something that I liked, even if it was just for an hour, whether it was working out or going for a walk just to clear the air. And I found that really helped a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, what were your favorite resources in first year? There was a bunch. We did go through uh, Toronto Notes quite a bit. Uh, and that was a really good compendium of, you know, very basic information. It wouldn't tell you exactly, you know, the treatment that you would need to give to a patient. But we did use Toronto Notes quite a bit for kind of information gathering. Um, medicine is packed full of resources. You're going to have textbooks flying out of everywhere. Everyone's going to say that one textbook is better than the rest. Um, but I found that, you know, going through the textbook, textbooks, just the recommended ones that you get for each course and writing down the important things and making cue cards was kind of my best resource. So I made these cue cards on my computer um, in Microsoft Word. It wasn't a fancy cue card. And I just write down important things as I went. And I found that when I studied for big exams or even for the certification exam, I wouldn't go back to the textbooks and start rereading everything. I would just look at my important notes because it's impossible to review everything all at once again. And uh, can you give us an overview of what second year of PA school entails? Uh, for the U of T program, it's pretty interesting. And part of that's just because of the uh, rotations you do up north. Um, they do let you know that it does require travel. Um, so you do have to have the ability to get to whatever placements you're going to. Um, you're not guaranteed to go to everywhere that you apply to. So that's quite a stressful part as well too. 
um, just not knowing whether or not you're going to be all in one city for all of your rotations or whether you're going to have to move five times in five months. So you have to be quite minimalistic in what you pack. Um, I actually bought a car prior to second year just so I would be able to drive up north. Um, I did my rotations in Thunder Bay, so it was about a 15 and a half hour drive, which was pretty stressful because um, it was in the middle of winter. I just started my rotations in January. Um, but yeah, moving around, especially if you're on your own, you're not guaranteed to be with uh, other classmates is quite stressful because you're going to a new area that's remote, that doesn't have a lot of resources, and you're in charge of a lot of very important things as a student up there in terms of healthcare. So um, lots of stresses there. And uh, what clinical areas did you do rotations in? Like what's considered core and what did you choose to do your electives in? Sure. So um, for core rotations that I thought I needed a bit more hands-on work, I specifically chose to do, do those in the north. Uh, for example, my emergency uh, medicine rotation and my general surgery rotation. Those are really hands-on things that if you were in a large academic center, you might not get a lot of hands-on experience. So I specifically wanted to do those in the north because I figured the less, the less amount of learners, the more experience that I would get. Um, so I did uh, emergency medicine, general surgery, um, psychiatry. Uh, I did one primary care rotation up north, which is a requirement. Um, and I found those were really beneficial to do uh, in a rural area. Uh, I was actually fortunate enough uh, that all of my rotations in the north got put to one city. So I did all of my rotations in Thunder Bay. Um, it actually ended up working quite well because you're able to really learn the resources in the area as opposed to being put in a fresh spot every single month. Um, for my elective rotations, um, I did cardiology as well as thoracic surgery. Um, thoracic surgery was the inpatient ward that I worked on prior to the program, so I had quite a bit of interest in the field and I found I had a really good base of a little bit of knowledge about it too. So um, it was quite fun to work with the doctors that I had worked with for six years but in a different capacity as a student. Uh, and then cardiology um, was another rotation I did, but it was more community work. Um, I found that, you know, choosing one rotation for your electives that is, uh, you know, with core materials that you're going to use despite what profession you, or what specialty you get into. So I find, you know, cardiology is really applicable no matter what area you go into, whether it's family medicine, emergency medicine, or a specialty. Um, so I found that, you know, I'll do that rotation in cardiology. Even if it's not my thing, I'll have that knowledge to go to other different places. And then the thoracic surgery one was more just fun. So I did that one as a, as a fun one to do.